Hi there everybody and welcome back to another special video. Today I would like to go over something that I have seen around YouTube here and there and people have been covering it however I believe that they haven't covered it to the full extent so I would like to pretty much just do that today. Yeah it has to do with mainly the fact that the US Treasury bond yields have been doing something very interesting recently. And uh, yeah, let's actually cover that. So with that said, let's get started with this video. We are over here, guys, on Bloomberg, and I have pulled up the Treasury yields. I got the three months, six months, 12 months, two years, five years, 10 years, and 30 year. Just a quick summary, just so that way, if any one of you guys don't understand what bonds are, bonds are essentially you giving somebody money for a certain amount of time, and after that time is passed, they will give you that money back plus an interest amount so for example you have a friend and that friend asks you hey i need to borrow a hundred dollars for a year right so you give them a hundred dollars and then at the end of that one year they will give you back the hundred dollars with a two or one percent interest right so if they give you if you give them a hundred dollars and they, they say i'll give this back to you with one percent interest then at the end of one year you you will get a hundred and one dollars that's essentially what a bond is and the treasury yield bonds are essentially you giving money to the government or you lending money to the government for a certain amount of time and then after that certain amount of time they will pay you back with interest so that is essentially what a bond is and as you can see we have plenty of bonds right here these are the u.s treasury bond yields and we got three months six months 12 months two years five years 10 years and 30 years as i just said and normally the way that you would assume that a bond yield would work is the longer time frame that you have or the longer time frame that the person has your money for the higher yield you should get because that is more risk onto you right it's more chance of them defaulting is more chance of them not paying you back etc 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 therefore the yield that you should get back would actually be higher at least that is the normal concept of how this would work so let's just actually go over here and see what is actually happening with these yields so the three month is actually half of a percent the six month is 1.05 percent the 12 month is 1.66 percent the two year is 2.46 percent and the five year is 2.56 percent right up to this point everything makes perfect sense however if we actually come over here to the 10 year we see that it drops to 2.38 percent lower than the five year and lower than the two year and if we actually see over here at the 30 year we see that it falls even more to 2.43 percent which is lower than the five year and lower than the two year so let's actually see this in a much better light i made this quick graph it's essentially exactly what you guys just saw and this is essentially the yield curve right now so i just plotted these numbers and this is essentially the yield curve as you can see the two year is higher than the 10 year which is even higher than the 30 year now what a lot of people usually bring up when the yield curve inverts is that we usually when the two years and the 10 years invert it usually is a sign for a recession i believe 11 times the the yield curve is inverted it has predicted nine recessions so does this mean that we're going to get a recession seeing that the two and the 10 inverted uh, probably not because just because the yield curve inverts doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to get a recession. However, out of the nine recessions that we have had, the yield curve has inverted, right? So it's almost one to one, not really. However, there is something here that, again, we haven't seen a lot. We have not seen a lot. And that is the fact that, well, the two and the 30 inverted. So if the 2 and 10 normally say that a recession is coming, what in the world does the 2 and the 30 mean? I am actually really, really scared for this because if a recession is coming at the 2 and 10, what in the world is coming at the 2 and 30? And not just that, guys, the 5 and the 30 even inverted, right? Which is just insane. So what this tells me is a couple of things. And that is the fact that, well, obviously, people have less confidence in the government, in the U.S. government, in the long term than in the short term. Bond yields are inversely proportional to the price when the price goes up meaning investors are buying bonds the yield comes down that is essentially why we're seeing the yield coming down on the 10 and 30 year because a lot of people are buying into the 10 and 30 year this is going to end up causing a lot a lot of issues because again normally what people usually t tend to look at is the 2 and the 10 and when this inverts people tend to get scared i don't understand why nobody has mentioned yet 
the 2 and the 30 inverting. That is a huge, huge, huge just concern. This usually never happens and is really, really unprecedented. And you know what's funny about all of this? That almost on a cue, as of March 21st, 2022, Powell comes out, the Federal Reserve Chairman comes out saying, hey, maybe you should look at term short treasury yields curve for a recession risk. Fed Chair pointed to the spread between three month and 18 month forward. Meaning that the Fed literally come out, Jerome Powell literally came out and said, hey, don't look at the two and 10 year, look at the three and 18, because at, at the three and 18, we don't see a recession happening here, right? We, we really, really don't. And if we actually come over here, if we take a look at the three month and the 18 month, which is somewhere in here. Yeah, you can pretty much just tell that this is not inverted. However, how is it that as of March 21st, this man comes out saying, hey, ignore, ignore the, the two and 10, right? Ignore, ignore that one, even though that one's the one that's most present. If you take a look at this one, if you take a look at the three month and the 18 month, then a, a recession isn't coming, right? This is very, very deceptive. And I personally do not like it at all. He's pretty much just saying avert your eyes from this chaos is happening right here and over here we're fine it's very very similar to how these people fudge the cpi numbers and saying oh well if you just take out energy and if you just take out housing then you know everything everything's back to normal everything there is no inflation guys even though in reality we are seeing everything go up in price it is just very very deceptive and it's it's essentially the wizard of oz where don't look at the guy behind the curtain operating the machine L look at this scary big thing that's currently happening just a virtualize from reality that that's essentially what's happening here so looking at this we pretty much can determine that something really really bad is going to happen very very soon now what am i going to do with this right i own a lot of stock and i have a lot of money invested i mean i recently just reached a hundred thousand dollars in my portfolio and I have around eighty four thousand dollars invested so what am I going to do with this if this thing crashes? Obviously, if this thing crashes, I will pretty much lose all my gains. However, the way that I look at this, guys, is, and this is essentially what I try to promote here, try not to focus on what the market is doing. What you want to do is, remember, when you buy companies, you are buying a company. You are not buying a ticker symbol. You are buying an ownership of a company. These 169.5 shares I have on Vici, or this 0.16915, shares that have a visa this is part of an actual company okay so if the stock market were to crash i would just take the opportunity and buy some more because at least the way that i'm investing my strategy of investing is i am trying to come up with cash flow and the way that i come up with cash flow is through dividend investing that is essentially my strategy and that doesn't involve what the market is doing i'm not going to make money if the market goes up because i'm not selling However, I will make money if the market comes down because that means that if I were to buy $100 worth of a stock, I will get more shares out of the stock and that company is going to pay me more dividends in comparison. So the way that I like to look at things is when the market falls, I'm going to pretty much be buying very, very aggressively in order to increase my dividend income, which right now is at almost $3,500 a year. So that's essentially my plan. Again, not financial advice. That's pretty much all I want to talk about in this video. Just letting you guys know that the two year and the 10 year inverted and the two year and the 30 year inverted and the five year and the 10 year inverted and the five year and the 30 year inverted. So this is uh, looking very, very nice. It's looking for the greatest economy of all time. And uh, yeah, it should be, uh, we should be flourishing within the next couple months. God forbid nothing happened. That pretty much does it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube. You can follow me on my new tech sites of Bitchu, Odyssey, and Rumble. And just to my stock analysis videos and crypto videos, you will find exclusives as well. In regards to Odyssey, Rumble, and YouTube, I have a Let's Play channel. Link in the description below. If you want to catch me there, follow me there. With that said, peace out. And be on the lookout for the next video, which will probably be a stock analysis.